After the Baron of Arizona, Vincent next appeared in the 1950 screwball comedy Champagne for Caesar. In it, Ronald Coleman plays Beauregard Bottomley, an eccentric genius who lives with his sister Gwen, played by Barbara Britton, and an alcoholic pet parrot named Caesar. Molly wants a drink! Let's get loaded! <laughs> he is a man who knows everything about everything, except, it turns out, how to keep a job. One day he applies for a position at the My Lady Soap Company, and the interview is going well until he makes the mistake of cracking a joke in front of company president Burnbridge Waters, played by Vincent Price. Burnbridge detests humor and promptly dismisses Beauregard, who is insulted at his treatment. What I am about to tell you now is very top secret. It ranks with the discovery of electricity and the invention of the wheel. I am thinking of putting on the market an all-purpose cake of soap that will also be used to clean teeth. I see, sort of, uh, <laughs> sort of uh, foam at the mouth approach, eh? <laughs> you would have started tomorrow morning. Beauregard learns that the My Lady Soap Company is actually the sponsor of a popular quiz show called Masquerade for Money, where contestants dress in outlandish costumes and are asked questions based on their attire. He decides to go on the program and teach them a lesson. On the show, contestants win $5 for the first question answered correctly and double their money for each successive one. Yes, sir, the audience appears in a costume representing his or her favorite person, object, thing, or animal. Contestants are asked questions about the person or thing their costume represents. We pay $5 for the first question, $10 for the second question, and so on until the sixth question, which pays the lovely loot of 160 clinkers. He manages to get on the show dressed as an encyclopedia, which means the host, Happy Hogan, played by Art Linkletter, can ask him questions about any topic. I am the encyclopedia. And the monocle? A Britannica. Oh, in that case, I can ask you anything about anything, and if we can ask you anything about anything, I will ask you anything about anything. I'm sure if you ask the questions, that'll be a very limited field. <laughs> Beauregard flies through the initial five questions with ease and asks to come back the next episode for a sixth question. Now, wait a minute. Really? We're running out of time. No more questions, no more time. Well, that's all right. I'll come back next week when you have more time. Thank you very much, folks. Your encouragement has been my inspiration. I'll see you all next week, if they'll allow me on the program. You'll be back on, Mr. Buckley. This had never been done before, and the producers initially refused. But due to public pressure demanding to see more of Beauregard, they eventually agree. Ratings begin to soar as Beauregard correctly answers question after question. He also begins to become something of a media celebrity along the way. His winnings eventually become so large that Burnbridge begins to worry, especially when Beauregard confesses to him that he intends to stay on the program until he drives Burnbridge into bankruptcy. Burnbridge becomes desperate and devises a devious plan to throw Beauregard off his game. He enlists the aid of a blonde temptress named Flame O'Neill, played by Celeste Holm, to distract him and report back on any potential topics which he might be less knowledgeable about. Meanwhile, host Happy Hogan begins seeing Beauregard's sister, wooing her in an attempt to get her to talk Beauregard into dropping his vendetta and simply quitting the show. Of course, nothing goes quite as planned and the film ends in a quirky climax that is fun to watch. Campaign for Caesar was directed by Richard Worf for the independent studio Cardinal Pictures and distributed through United Artists. Price puts in an enjoyable performance as Burn Bridgewaters, playing the role with a campy, over-the-top flair. This is one of the earliest pictures where Price hams it up on screen, giving the campy type of performance we would see time and again throughout the years. The interesting thing about Champagne for Caesar was how timely the plot was in 1950. With the burgeoning new medium of television just beginning to sweep the nation, quiz shows and talk shows were becoming all the rage, making the move from radio to TV. In a case of life imitating Art, Vincent Price would go on to appear in many of these over the following decade, and Art Linkletter, who played Happy Hogan, made his biggest claim to fame in real life as a radio and TV host. Director Richard Worf would also be best remembered for his work in television, directing such shows as Gunsmoke, My Three Sons, and The Beverly Hillbillies. Vincent would appear on screen once more with actor Ronald Coleman, who played Beauregard Bottomley, in 1957 in the film The Story of Mankind. The voice of Caesar the Parrot was voiced by, interestingly enough, Mel Blanc. I'll buy that! 
Overall, Champagne for Caesar is a lighthearted, quirky comedy that's a lot of fun. Although he isn't given that much to do in the film, Price makes the most of his scenes. Next up for Vincent is another comedy from 1950 that wasn't quite as successful, Curtain Call at Cactus Creek. I see. Well, this doesn't come as a surprise to me. Vincent fusses for hours over this precious soup stock. He says good soup comes from good stock. So when I found Nestle's soup time with home style stock and then made it in only 10 seconds, well, I got such an evil look. Oh, but even Vincent admits home style stock makes soup time something special. I wanted to hate it, but it's just too good. Nestle's soup time instant soups with home style stock. Look for our faces on the shelf.